I'm glad to be back again in Bologna, which is a famous ancient place of learning with the oldest European university. We all know how important education is. Uh, education simply is the most influential tool to change human person and society. And uh, it's growingly important in time of growing diversity. We need to live together, not only to exist. To exist is easier, but to live in full sense of living means responsibility, means sharing, accepting, not only tolerating uh, the others. Um, and of course, ignorance only breeds uh, intolerance, and from intolerance we get very easily to conflicts which are so present today in the world. Diversity is really growing for many reasons. For example, for example, uh, globalization. It is something we, we need to take into account when we uh, not only travel, but try to organize, uh, to live uh, in, in different um, connections, not only in, in trade or business, but also politically and internationally. And from this point of view, uh, religious studies are cru crucially important, more and more. We simply cannot be uh, literate or digitally grammar and religiously illiterate. Everybody has, even here in this hall, smartphones to make pictures, to, to record or to simply communicate. We need smart people with smartphones, of course, but smart people are important. Knowing what's going on in the world, why diversity is, is rather a principle than a problem, a reality, definition, more than a problem. Because we all are different. My son is different from me. We all are different but we all are equal in dignity. Whether we come from Europe or Africa, from a royal family or homeless family, equal in dignity. And those who do not understand religion cannot understand what is going on in the world today. And especially if we don't understand abuse of religion, abuse, which is so frequent. The case of Mahatma Gandhi, this is fanaticism. It's not a problem of religion. Fanaticism. There were always in the history fanatics, extremists, fundamentalists. But the difference is if they are in the center of power, in the center of gravity, in the center of society, or at the margins. This is a huge difference for evolution, for society, for culture, for living together. So I think that this annual conference and the whole network, which is so great and, and growing, is important contribution to, uh, to, to understanding and acting accordingly, not to be just observers, lament, lamentators, commentators, but actors, doers, for better. Armando Barucco mentioned 20th century like without religion. Yeah, they were very strong very influential, very bloody secular, secular regimes. The most bloody dictators of the 20th century were secular dictators called Hitler, Stalin, Mao Zedong, Pol Pot. So the answer without religion is not more human. If secularism replaced religions or freedom in society by imposing secularist ideology it's, it's a tyranny, it's a problem for freedom, for democracy. So what is the best? Open, pluralist society with equal citizenship, with equal citizenship. Secular state, which is fair towards all, is a blessing for all, for religion, for non-believers, for humanists, secularists, for all. So um, I'm glad to be here uh, to meet many of you. One man especially I want to 
um, quote Alberto Meloni because we worked throughout years on two ideas or concepts. One was on human dignity and one on religious climate change. Um, there, was, there, were, there was sequence of conferences last year on human dignity. <coughs> we wanted simply to dig deeper and the result in December was a contribution to 70th birthday of Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which should be not only remembered, but, but implemented in time of division, in time of questioning of the concept of the, of the human rights uh, in, in the world. And so it gave the birth to Junta del Este Declaration on Human Dignity for Everyone, Everywhere. I want to say that science must contribute to discovery and better knowledge of truth. This is the criterion, the objective, the sense of science, to know the truth, not semi, not lies or, or quasi, but truth. Because truth liberates. Truth is based on justice. And um, science and religion are two enormous forces in human history. Today, in the previous century, uh, these are forces uh, of civilizational progress when they seek truth, when they seek and promote common good for all. If not, we have a problem. And the um, base of common good, criterion of common good, and objective of common good is human dignity of all, of all. And there is sense or meaning of equilibrium in society, balance in society, duties and rights, both rights and duties, freedom and uh, responsibilities. It cannot work. One-sided coin is not valid. Freedom without responsibility will cease to exist. That's the challenge of our societies. So when, where is here where is here the role of religious freedom or for freedom of religion or belief? Human dignity is foundational principle of all universal fundamental human rights. And human dignity is inviolable, inviolable. That's why we declare uh, moratorium on death penalty or ban on in Europe. It's based on fundamental rights of each person and these rights are undeniable. Freedom of religion or belief is very special, expansive uh, human rights. It's not a bow, it's not more, it's not the first, but it's litmus test of all human rights because it's freedom of thought, freedom of conscience, freedom to believe or not to believe but also freedom of expression, freedom of association, freedom of assembly, freedom of ownership. Otherwise, you cannot implement religious freedom, uh, freedom of community. Uh, so when this is respected, many other rights are respected. And if not, then civil and political rights are abused as well. So basically, four is, is a criterion of good governance. So we desperately need uh, also, as Alberto used to say, religious climate change. Some messages have been given already uh, because according to serious data, religious freedom is a minority issue in the world. 73%, 73% according to Pew Research Center in Washington of the world population live in countries where high or very high obstacles uh, or, or um, the restrictions are imposed on religious freedom. And secondly, trends are negative. So situation is bad and trends are worrying. Uh, countries like North Korea, Pakistan, but also India, Malaysia, Myanmar, Middle East, North Africa, Sub-Saharan <coughs> Africa suffer. People suffer there a lot. These levels of suffering or problems are from intolerance through discrimination to persecution and even genocide. Yes, even genocide, which is a special category. It's called crime of crimes. Um, 
different forms uh, are, are in place either by government harassment or social hostilities or even non-state actors uh, are very, very you know, active against religious freedom. But there are also signs of hope, and I want to mention a few, and that's uh, my message especially, to act against or for climate change, against the, the negative trends. A political, academic, and, and religious signs, signs of hope. For example, uh, European Union reacted to these mass atrocities, and that's why I stand here. Since 2016, when European Parliament adopted a very strong resolution against mass atrocities in Syria and in Iraq and labeled these atrocities as a genocide, there was a request also inter alia to nominate first ever uh, permanent uh, European Union special representative for freedom of religion or belief outside, so for international uh, domain of religious freedom. Um, in 2017, there was first ever Lorenzo Natali Media Prize given to journalists writing about religious persecution or persecution of atheists in Tunisia, interfaith dialogue in Burkina Faso. First time journalism and religious freedom. Um, since 2018, last year, we have uh, several projects where we finance interfaith dialogue and cooperation an intercultural dialogue in several troubled countries and regions. Since last year, Denmark, United Kingdom, and Germany have the same positions with different titles, special rep, or special commissioner, or special envoy of Prime Minister Theresa May. So three major important countries established only last year uh, uh, representative for religious freedom. You have, since 2017, Observatorio, at the foreign ministry. There was last year first ever ministerial summit on international religious freedom in Washington. Almost 80 countries participated. First ever summit on this agenda. And last but not least, in January, recently, European Parliament in Strasbourg adopted a very clear resolution on special envoy and the European Union guidelines for religious freedom of religion or belief supported by 576 votes, which is overwhelming majority, saying, yes, we need to continue. This is something new where well, the European Union, after elections, should do more and better. And that's good signal. Academic signals, or religious as well, in combination, was a man message on the side of Islamic scholars as a reaction to 9-11 and Beslan, if you remember, a very bloody uh, or bloodshed in, in the Caucasus in 2004. Uh, very clear message, an important message. Then there was Marrakesh Declaration 2016 on the treatment of minorities in Muslim-majority countries. Faith for Rights, uh, Beirut Declaration adopted 2017 in March under the leadership of United Nations Office for, of High Commissioner for Human Rights. There's a connection between rights and faith. And of course, European Academy of Religion 2016 established as a special contribution to scientific cooperation around religion. And last, religious are now very visible. You know, not many people read documents, encyclicals, fatwas, but they see pictures. They see, for example, or seen how top leader of Christianity, of Catholics, Pope Francis met with top leader of Sunni Islam in Cairo, with the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar. This was a very strong message in 2017 against the clash of civilization. And they repeated it again now in February in, Al in Abu Dhabi as a message of brotherhood, which is the language used by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We have many rights, 30 articles, and only two duties. One is to behave in the spirit of brotherhood, sisterhood, and the second is uh, to, to observe duties towards community which we live in. And we can have, and we enjoy many, many rights if we care about those two duties. Uh, last year in Pakistan, which is full of social hostilities, uh, Pagame Pakistan, message 
of Pakistan was adopted or signed by over 5,000 imams and scholars. Very important signal from Pakistan to the Pakistan as well against uh, violent hatred and hostilities. We need more and more cohesion. We need follow-up of these uh, declarations, materialization of very good intentions and, and uh, statements. And we need to move from dialogue towards real cooperation against violence, ex extremism, against fundamentalism, against abuse of religion or terrorism. We need to get ideas into life, promote on one side freedom of religion or belief, but also on the other equal citizenship and pluralism. Ladies and gentlemen, three years ago, uh, this uh, network, European Academy of Religion, uh, was established. Three years ago, uh, my mandate was designed as the first ever EU special envoy. It speaks not preferably about our imagination, action, or institutional creativity, but I think it speaks about our reaction to the unacceptable situations in the neighborhood, in the world of today because it was a reaction to genocide. And our fathers promised never again, which means to act preventively against such inhuman situations or, or treatment. Uh, I'm sure that with such committed approach, we may be closer uh, to importance of international religious freedom, freedom of religion or belief, and to know the situation better, but also to unite, uh, unite out our forces to make this century more humane. It is possible, it is also important, and I wish us all to achieve this noble objective. Thank you.